Hi, in this episode, we're going to be discussing method number 10, adapting non-photographic lenses to your digital camera. This will be part one of this topic. Now, did you know that non-photographic lenses like these can be adapted to your digital camera? I've done it for years and it works on projector lenses like this slide projector lens, movie camera lenses like this old vintage lens, x-ray lenses like this one, and larger lenses like this one, oscilloscope lenses like this one, and just oddball lenses that I found on eBay like this one. I'm not even sure what it came from. But virtually any non-photographic lens can be adapted to a digital camera if you follow my three steps. Now, when you adapt these oddball, quirky, non-photographic lenses to your digital camera, you'll often get very unusual images that are not like anything you've ever seen before. In fact, I've adapted some of these non-photographic lenses, and as far as I know, I'm the only one in the world to have adop adapted that lens in that manner. Now, I call my adapted lenses Frankenstein lenses, or Franken lenses for short because like the Frankenstein monster, these lenses are made from various parts and pieces kind of all cobbled together. Typically, these lenses don't have an aperture, they don't autofocus, and some of them don't even manually focus. They only have a fixed focus and, and objects are only going to be in focus at a certain distance from the front of the lens. Now building a Frankenstein lens is for the adventurous photographer. For the photographer who is wanting to go where no one has gone before. Now there are many ways to adapt these non-photographic lenses to your digital camera. And there's really no right way or wrong way. And in this episode, I'm going to cover the three steps that I follow when adapting any of my Frankenstein lenses. Step one is to select and purchase your lens. Step two is to test the lens to make sure it actually will work on your digital camera. And the third and final step is to actually Put the lens together, build the lens. Let's take a look at these three steps in closer detail. Step one is selecting and buying your first Frankenstein lens. There are two steps involved in step one. The first is to research your lens. I've included a link at the end of this episode to Toby Marshall's website. Toby Marshall is the number one Frankenstein lens builder, creator in the entire world, in my opinion. And I'd like you to click on his link as part of your research and you will find dozens and dozens of non-photographic lenses that he has adapted and he frankly tells you uh, how he adapts them, what cameras he uses them on, and he posts a number of beautiful photos of that adapted Frankenstein lens for you to review. The second type of research that I typically do before buying a new Frankenstein lens is to go to Flickr.com and do a search by that lens's name you probably will find some actual images of people who have already adapted that lens and you can see what the images look like 
and you can see what cameras they use them on. When it comes to buying the lens, 99% of these non-photographic lenses are discontinued. Therefore, you're only going to be able to buy them used. And there's two places where I go to purchase my used non-photographic lenses. The first places are locally. I go check out pawn shop, shops, thrift stores, and even the local Craigslist. When it comes to shopping on the internet for your non-photographic lenses, uh, you guessed it, I, I go to eBay and I actually purchase about 90% of my non-photographic lenses on eBay. Now, there is another site down in Atlanta, Georgia, USA, that sells a few non-photographic lenses. You might want to check them out. They're called KEH.com. Here's a couple of tips for you on how to get a good price on your non-photographic lens that you're intending to Frankenstein. Popular lenses, such as Diaplan and Colorplan lenses, are known throughout the photographic community as wonderful lenses to adapt and they often command a pretty good price. Now what I have found is for example when it comes to this particular lens this is a color plan lens and you can almost never get a really good price on that because pretty much everybody knows what they're worth. But what I'll do is, instead of doing a search on eBay for the color plan lens, I'll do a search for this particular Leica slide projector. And this particular Leica slide projector is called the Pradovit Color 250. Now, they made this particular slide projector with six or eight different lenses in them. And I found this slide projector being sold on eBay with the exact color plan lens that I was looking for. And I bought it, and the fellow selling the slide projector really didn't know what he had. So I got a pretty darn good price. Another way to save some money is if you end up buying the entire contraption, the, the slide projector or the movie uh, camera, it's often very heavy, like the original seller on this wanted $50 in shipping because it's so heavy. Well, a way you can save money is to ask the seller if they would just take the lens out of the heavy slide projector and they can keep or throw away the heavy slide projector and send you the lightweight lens. Save yourself the majority of the shipping costs. And a third and final tip I have for you when it comes to saving money on your non-photographic lenses is this. A lot of them, like this Meyer Optics Gorlitz Diaplan lens, have very, very simple designs. This Leica color plan also is a very simple three element design. Now, I will often buy these with fungus in them, dust in them, that type of thing. Even some, sometimes I'll buy them with scratches because this particular Diaplan lens has only three simple elements. They're easy to take apart and you can very easily clean these elements, put them back and you have a lens that's as good as new. Or you can buy a lens that's defective and maybe has a good rear element but a scratch front element and you can buy some defective ones and swap out the lenses. So you end up with a good lens without scratches by taking components from uh, the bad lens and using it in the good lens. So step two when it comes to making a Frankenstein lens is testing testing that new lens once you receive it. Now, for a new lens to work properly on your digital camera, it'll need to do two things. Number one, have the proper flange focal distance. If the lens's flange focal distance is too long, 
you won't be able to adapt it. If it's too short, you can't get it close enough to your sensor. So number one, it needs to have the right flange focal distance. And secondly, the image circle that is projected out the back of the lens needs to fully cover the sensor on your camera. If it doesn't fully cover it, you're going to have serious vignetting. Now, few sellers on eBay or local sellers are going to know what the flange, flange focal distance of that lens is. They're not going to know uh, how big the image circle is and what size sensor the image circle will cover. So after you receive your new uh, non-photographic lens, you will need to test it. And the two tests you're going to do are number one, a test to determine what the flange fo focal distance is, and number two, a test to make sure the image circle of your new non-photographic lens completely covers your sensor. Let me show you how I do that. 